So I hope you heard the big news that React 18 is soon to be released. And what I want going to talk with you about it is that the concurrent React uh, architecture. And what bring us the, to here today. And the way we're going to do that is by telling a short story about, yeah, it's good, I have lunch now. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, um, one of the big, biggest features of React 18 are the concurrent features. And what is so special about it is that the way that React team created this architecture. And when it happened. Um, so back like five years ago, we still had the, the stack reconciler and the, it had some issues. And the way React team looked at these issues was this way. React Web was gaining popularity very fast, but the React Native platform wasn't. And they started to look at this issue, like why did it happen, what, what was the main problem there. And their conclusion was that the difference between React for the Web and React Native and React Native other frameworks was that other frameworks worked with multi-threaded systems and models, while React worked with a single-threaded, concurrent, not concurrent way. Um, and they decided to see what they can do in order to improve that. And this is what brings us here today, since this is why we had the ability to talk about concurrent mode. And the way it worked back then is that we had a stack reconciler and it was, sorry, I'm going to use that. <laughs> and stack reconciler, sorry, this is new for me. Um, <laughs> the stack reconciler. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so back then we had the stack reconciler. It looked in a call stack-like way and what it did is executing DOM tasks and JavaScript tasks, ex tasks exactly by the order of calling in functions and calling out and executing this. And once the JavaScript would take too long to execute, we could achieve an, an issue with the main thread since it could be blocked b instead of performing its other important tasks like CSS, like building the CSS tree or the DOM tree and then painting it. This is since we had, we still have this um, issue with the way our browsers work and it's that their resources are limited this is why it says there are 16 milliseconds for browser render. This is the time we have for creating and reconciling our React. And the main issues were main thread blocking and lack of execution control. So we di didn't have any idea about which tasks are important or not important or low in priority or high in priority. This is why um, they had an idea of separating this task into different um, chunks. And I like to think about this idea in a way of a delivery system. So let's say, imagine FedEx, and we have a different in size packages, and we have only one way to to get these packages to the customers. And what, this is the way the stack reconciler worked since it looked like we have a lot of different packages but we don't know or not sure how to handle this because 
each of these tasks will get the same priority and execute it in a one after another way. And then we will introduce the fiber reconciler. What was special about it is that we, we, it had two phases. One phase was the reconciliation, and it's the phase that we, would, we were able to interrupt, and we still can. Remember this only because I'm going to <laughs> get back to it later. And the commit phase, this is not interruptible phase, and this allowed them not to block the main thread anymore while JavaScript was executing. Um, this brings us to the fiber reconciler structure, as maybe some of you know it. So it had a fiber data structure in its basis. The second the building block was the scheduler, and with concurrent mode, we get the lanes. And this is what is special about it. I will talk about each of these in a second. <laughs> um, so fiber data structure, you may be familiar with this structure from other industries, you know, like optic fibers. And what it means is actually splitting a big amount of work into s separate smaller chunks. This will allow React to execute these chunks or in React uh, world it's called unit of work into different batches and work in a better in a only more organized way sorry and in this is the way it actually looks it's just a simple JavaScript object and it keeps the, the data about what is going to be executed and what it has in what it stores inside of it and i'm showing you this only cuz i want you not to be afraid from react source code and when i first started to the preparations for this talk it was like whoa it looks really scary what i'm doing here <laughs> and what was special is that as i continue researching and finding my way through the React source code, it gave me the ability to understand what is React in its lower level and how it works behind the scenes. And so I want you to take this picture <laughs> just in your memory because this is not something that you should be afraid of. You can dig into the source code and start in exploring in and investigating different architectures. So the second um, building block from React Fiber was the scheduler. And this is a very important building block as this is basically what does the prioritization of tasks. And when I'm talking about different tasks in priority, I mean like there is a difference for our users on our app. What happens if I'm clicking or I'm showing an animation, I want my user to be able to see uh, an immediate response. And this is what the scheduler does. It assigns each task a priority, and this priority is according to the time that it has to be shown on the screen. So if I'm talking about animations, this will get immediate priority, and the way that the scheduler will know about that is that each time he processes another unit of work, our fibers, it will check if it should yield and give the control back to the browser. Sorry. So the next one will be user blocking priority or normal priority, and these are most of our tasks, or the idle priority that never comes back, and it will only be executed when React uh, when the browser is it at this idle time when it's free, actually. Um, so the two main questions you may ask about the schedule, so how can it keep track or how he can suspend the task. So regarding the suspension of task, we talked about it. Um, and the way he does that is simply asks itself what, is this the time I should handle this or I need to give the control back to the browser. And how he keeps track is the lanes. 
and the concurrent work loop. So here you can see the function that executes the concurrent work loop and what it actually does is each time it has a new fiber to work on, this is the work in progress, uh, he asked himself in, if he should yield right now. And if not, he will, come, he will continue with the execution. But if yes, he will stop it and move on uh, and give the browser the control. And the way he does that, or at least he, he was doing that at the beginning, since this model had a few different versions of it. This is something that React team work, as I mentioned earlier, they work on it very long time, like five years or six years. And what's special about it, it has different generations of it. The first one, or the POC one, you may say, was done with request animation frame and request idle callback. So these two native APIs allowed the scheduler to, under, to push tasks that have higher priority or to push tasks that have lower priority onto the screen or, or just take it out. And this is not the way it works today, but I wanted to, under, to give you the idea of how, what's the, what stands behind it and the same model works today too, but today it's done with message channel. Since request idle callback has its, had it, fa it, it falls. And, what, and the issue that it had is that it had an unstable trigger time. That means that they could not count on the way the idle callback will be executed. So they came up with another solution and it's was to use the message channel to create a port and to send messages directly between the browser and the reconciler. But it's still a work in progress and it's not done. So I'm not going to dig inner to the details. And if we're going back to our small analogy with the delivery, with the delivery system, the way it looked then so now we have different packages, but we already know, with the help of the scheduler, was what is the priority of this task, if it's lower or higher. And, but we still have only one way to get this to the screen, to get this to the customer, with the same track. If you, I'm not sure you've seen that, so I'll show you that again. <laughs> if, if there is a faster and more urgent task that it's arriving, the red one there, it will be executed immediately and only then before the other scheduled tasks, it will just push them aside. And this is where we come to the, th the third building block of the scheduler, of the lanes, sorry. Um, Lanes are kind of our tracks, and there is a fast way to get to the browser, or there is a slower way to get to the browser. And the way it does that is by separating each task by priority to different lists of items, like arrays. And once React work loop gets each fiber, it first assigns it the initial lane or track. And the, then the scheduler can come in and decide that this track is more urgent. So he will push it to the next lane that will be shown on the screen. And if we're checking out our delivery system model, right now with the lanes, we are getting some way batched updates that can be executed with the same track. That means that if you have heard about the automatic batching in React 18, this is the way it's done. Since right now with the lanes, he can decide if 
it's something that could, should be batched with other synchronous or asynchronous updates together or from the same priority. These are the improved, the new concurrent features, like some of them. So the way improved suspense work, it works with the lanes. And what's special about it is that lanes right now allows it to be on the same track to the browser. And before that, it wasn't this way. Since suspense worked in a concurrent, not in a concurrent way. But right now, if you are doing a suspense component, everything that is below it will not get executed with the same priority. But if it's, but if it's a, with concurrent mode, it will be able to move this lane to the side and concurrently work on other lanes. This is why React calls it concurrent mode. But actually, it's still single-threaded JavaScript. And automatic batching, I hope you will find it useful. But in React 17, these kind of set states would not be batched and will cause a re-render. While in React 18, with the lanes me model and mechanism, it will be. And this is what's special about it. This is why we call it concurrent. And if you ask me what's next, so React 18 has a big advancement in front of them. And the way we talk about it is that right now React is going towards implementing the suspend, sorry, not the scheduler as a side module for the browser. So hopefully this model will reach the browsers and be part of its native API. Well, and with this note, I would like to finish as this is what so great about it. So that's it.